I previously built an experimental wave drive. I built a tank with two of these drives which worked fairly well. Each of the drives consists of a flexible track to make the wave shape and inside is a spiral shaped piece of steel which rotates and shapes the flexible track as it does so. I got this idea from another YouTube video but this one is a single wave drive with steering wheels at the front. This mechanism is a bit like a screw tank but it allows us to manage the sideways friction from the screws because they turn inside the track, rather than having them running directly on the ground. But what actually makes it go along? It seems clear that there's a wave moving backwards or forwards and pushing the tank in the opposite direction, but surely each segment of the track is actually stationary and just moving up and down. I had quite a lot of problems shaping the spiral parts in this version, I probably could have gone about it differently, but a few people in the comments suggested a different approach, which was to use a camshaft to make the wave instead of the spiral parts. If the camshaft is mounted above the track then it'll also help with ground clearance, which was a problem I had, because I needed a pulley to drive the rotary motion of each spiral. Camshafts are typically used in an engine to open exhaust valves and inlet valves at the right time. In my case we're going to need far more cams and we need to arrange them in a spiral shape so that they make a wave when they drive the next part of the mechanism below them. To start with though I'm not going to design the track so we'll just push some flat plates up and down and see if that drives it along. Put your guess in the comments now if you think that will make a forward or backwards motion as the camshaft rotates or if it'll only work once the flexible track is added. This whole thing is about half a metre long so there are lots of parts to print including four of these box sections with slots in which look a bit like toasters and there's also some pieces of toast to go in them. I've got the cams and lots of other stuff printing on all of my printers. So yeah these are literally just boxes with seven slots in and some of them have eight slots in and they all fit together to get 30 in total. Just a quick ad from my 3D printing sponsor, thanks to Lulzbot for supporting my channel with 3D printers. There are two of these end parts which have bearings mounted in them to support the camshaft at each end and I've got lots of these pieces of toast to print which are T-shapes and those are the pieces that we're hopefully going to drive on. There are 30 cams to make in three groups of 10 so I'm printing on those on multiple printers and also making sure that I number them as I go so I don't lose track of which one goes in each position. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects, all these parts are printed in Pro PLA+. I've got 10 segments of my cam attached there and we've got another 20 to make up the whole camshaft and here it is in one piece with all 30 sections and two stoppers at the end. Of course these cams have flat profiles so as a screw it wouldn't actually work very well as a screw tank because there's no sharp edge going down the screw. So basically on a flat surface it just spins around. If the ground was lumpy though or it had some texture to it then it would probably work quite well but you'd need some quite big lumps or some very soft mud. But it should be good for our purposes. I printed my toaster parts in four sections on four separate printers concurrently so I could save time and also it doesn't fit on the print bed so those screw together with some bridge parts which are screwed between all of the four sections. Here are those end parts, I've got a slimline low profile bearing in there and then a 3D printed thing so I can put my square camshaft into a round hole. That fits on there and I'll screw onto the 2020 extrusion. So let's pop our toast into the toaster, you can see that those slots are quite a bit bigger than the things that I'm putting in there so there is a bit of play but I wanted to reduce friction essentially so we'll see how that works out and if I turn the whole thing upside down so gravity pulls the pieces of toast down then we can see that that wave is conveyed to the top there from the screw so that's what we want. However the other way up which is the way it's going to be it doesn't work at all so we need something to pull those up. So I've got this red part which is basically a row of hooks that attaches there and there's one for every piece of toast and I'm going to use elastic bands to hook between the bits of toast and the hooks to pull those up. And they really just need to oppose gravity. So as the cam turns now it pushes down and the elastic band pulls it up again. I used yellow elastic bands in the end because I didn't have enough red ones but that seems to work quite well and there's not too much friction. I've only put this on one side, that's all that's needed really to pull the pieces of toast up. I thought I should fit a motor before we do any more testing so I don't have to hold on to it while I'm turning it and that seems to work. Obviously if I put something round on the bottom of this with it upside down then it drives it along so we can see there's a wave there that's definitely making a force. And obviously if I reverse it then it works in the other direction. But will it work on a flat surface? But before we see how well that works it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor which is Onshape. 
The founders of SolidWorks actually left SolidWorks to create Onshape because they saw that the future of CAD was in the cloud. So Onshape is a specific fit for companies using SolidWorks who need a more modern CAD and PDM solution. Onshape is accessible across all operating systems and works just like Google Drive and Google Docs. An Onshape document is a single source of truth for your design data. It's especially great for working in teams and directly with suppliers or manufacturers. You can now easily collaborate on the same document across the world at the same time. Onshape also includes industry-leading manufacturing-specific features for sheet metal and frame-based design, as well as surfacing, configurations, detailed drawings and FEA. Onshape recently acquired a company called Cloud Milling, which means that professional-grade CAM is coming to Onshape soon as well. I highly recommend the engineers and product developers watching to consider using Onshape for their business, and you can try it for free at onshape.pro slash James Bruton. So obviously those orange pieces of toast only go directly up and down, but will this go along now? We've got that travelling wave pushing backwards. So I've got my battery here, let's just power it up. So yes it does, but it doesn't do it very well. Let's just put that back and try it again. So there we go, but it is very, very shaky due to all of those things just stamping on the ground because we don't have such a smooth motion we'd have with a screw tank. So let's actually just try this in the opposite direction now. I'm just going to reverse that. Oh, so now the wave's going in the other direction. But it still goes... It still goes this way. So I just put a spirit level on my table here, and as you can see the bubble's not quite in the middle. If I pick up the right hand side, then it is, which means that I'm facing downhill slightly this way basically, so the vibrations are just driving it downhill. So easy test for that is to try and drive it uphill a little bit, so the wave is going back that way as it was to start with, away from the motor, and it should go uphill now if it works, which I don't think it does. Yeah, it's not getting anywhere fast. Let's just turn it around again. That's much quicker. So yeah, it doesn't work. It's just vibrations driving it downhill. So we need that flexible track, I think, to help push it along. I thought that probably wouldn't work, so I left these holes in the bottom of the pieces of toast to attach a flexible track. However, if we look at the original one, the track is free to move over the spiral-shaped piece of metal. It's not attached to it. And if we turn that screw, we can see that if we look at one section, it's actually moving in a kind of circular motion, which is what's pushing it along. So it's like little feet taking little steps and doing that all down the track. I found this rubber strip which I cut off a bigger piece of rubber that's been in my spares box for ages. It's not really very grippy and that means hopefully when we put it on top of all of those pieces of toast they'll actually be able to slide past it as the travelling wave comes and hopefully that'll work a bit like the original track over the spiral shaped piece of metal. I left holes in the end pieces so that I could put some extra things on so I've made a clamp that fits in there to hold the ends. And now somehow we need to hold that down so it follows the contour of all of the little legs. So the next thing is some of this stuff, which is anti-slip mat I got from Ikea, and it's actually quite stretchy, so it's a bit like a rubber mesh. And the plan is that we're just going to put that over the rubber strip on the outside so it grips the ground, and tension that down all the way so that the rubber strip matches the contour of the legs. That is zip tied down to some 3D printed knobs on a strip that I've added on the end there, so now we can see we've got that travelling wave going down, Hopefully the little legs slip past the rubber mat on the inside and it grips the ground on the outside. So let's see if that goes along. Well actually that's much worse than it was without it. So yeah, not sure why that is, that just basically doesn't work at all. I'd already taken all the elastic bands off because I assumed that mesh was going to be enough to pull those cams up, but actually I've noticed with it the other way up, basically, yeah, that's, it's not really tight enough. So I'm going to go back and tension that up and see if that helps us at all. Yep, so that's much tighter now, so we'll power that up and see if it's any better. 
Well, that appears to be no different whatsoever, so that basically just doesn't work at all, and I guess sections of the track are not making a circular motion like they were with the articulated mechanical track, so it's not taking any steps at all. I mean, it kind of moves a bit, but it worked better even uphill without the track on. So just looking back at the uphill test there, at least it did go along before it stalled. So yeah, it worked better without the track basically. So we need a different solution. So one of my thoughts was to put extra T pieces on the bottom of these that go side to side, and then have a flexible track with a groove in that they can ride in so that we've got something that will actually make that track. The problem is with these going up and down is they actually have to slide sideways in that flexible track without getting stuck. So if it's mechanical, that's gonna be very difficult to get them to slide between the joints. And if it's something that's just flexible, it's gonna be hard to get something that that sort of C section that's actually flexible enough to follow the contour and that they can slide in without getting stuck as well. So I'm gonna try a slightly different approach. Looking at a centipede or a millipede, we can see it's got lots and lots of legs, but they're actually taking steps. And they're taking steps in sections, so it moves in a wave. So we're going to try and make our little legs or our pieces of toast move just like this. There isn't much space for each piece of toast to take a step, but what I'm going to do is put this diagonal groove in each of the cams. On top of each of the pieces of toast, there's going to be a pointy piece that I'm going to glue on, and that's going to run in the groove. The pieces of toast are loose in their slots, so as I pull the T-piece to one side or the other, the other end of it moves in the opposite direction, so I need to get my slots the right way round. I've done this with the first one, it's pretty hard to get that cam perfectly aligned, but you can see that seems to be running okay. I've only done this with one cam to start with as a test, but as you can see, the other end of it moves in a circular motion as the T-piece moves in that slot on the cam. So the plan is to do that with all of them. So here are all of the new cams with all of their slots in and all of those T-pieces with their points added. So running that quick, you should be able to see there's a slight wobble now, and that makes all of the legs walk in the direction the wave is going. So that should help us drive it along. But let's see if it works. So I've got my wave traveling backwards and the little feet are walking this way as it goes. So it should go this way better than it did before, but let's see what happens. Hmm, well that's terrible. Let's try it the other way just because why not? Nope, that's even worse. Let's reverse the polarity and see if that makes it go that way. No, well we can try it all the way around, but I don't think that's gonna make any difference. That's much worse than when I didn't have the cams with the groove in, with just the things going up and down, vibrating itself downhill, oh dear. So I thought I should test on carpet just so we can get rid of some of the vibrations and we've got a bit more grip for those smooth plastic feet. You can still see them moving in a circular motion, but um, yeah, that's no different at all really. So I think probably that the legs aren't hitting the ground for long enough to actually push it back, even though you can see them making that circular motion. So there's probably a better approach to this. In a previous project, I built an omnidirectional walking machine, which is three sets of legs with little wheels facing in the perpendicular axes. So depending on the velocity of each of those legs, we can walk in any direction or turn, just like omni wheels. And I got the mechanism for the legs from a channel called DIY Walkers, where they're mainly built of Lego, and this is basically a cam-driven set of four legs with an offset cam in the middle that drives some right angle linkages. This is a much better walking mechanism that uses a cam because the foot is on the ground for much longer and goes almost in a straight line along the ground. So of course the idea would be to have several of these mechanisms all in a long line, just like the centipede or the millipede, and have them all moving slightly out of sync so that the feet move down in a wave. We probably need many more of these closer together, but I think this would be a much better wave drive if we wanted to use cams than the thing that I built in this video. But that's going to be for another project. Eventually I want to make a giant landworm that I can ride on, but uh, not with this mechanism. In any case, I'll publish all the CAD for this, as I usually do. And if you want to support me through YouTube channel membership or Patreon, you can, and those links are in the description below. And patrons and YouTube channel members get access to all the videos up to a week early and sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up. And also Discord benefits.